5 Great Racing Games With Massive Flaws Racing games have been a staple in the gaming industry for decades, providing gamers with the opportunity to experience high-speed thrills and adrenaline fueled excitement from the comfort of their own homes. Among the many racing games that have graced our screens over the years, several stand out for their amazing gameplay and stunning visuals, as well as their inherent flaws that hindered their overall performance and likability. Although some of these flaws were perhaps thrown under the rug, others were made to stand out, for better or for worse. Now let's get started. Drive Club Drive Club, developed by Evolution Studios, was released for the PlayStation 4 back in 2014. The game was praised for its stunning visuals, massive graphics, and a wide range of cars and tracks to choose from. Drive Club featured a unique social aspect which allowed players to compete against one another in challenges and share their experiences with other players through a dedicated online community. However, Drive Club was definitely not without its flaws. The game suffered from a number of technical issues including server outages and bugs, which significantly impacted the game's launch. Despite the technical issues, Drive Club still managed to be a memorable and enjoyable racing game, with incredible cars, well-aged graphics, and a banging soundtrack from both the cars and the menus. Looking at gameplay of this game now, it's crazy to think that this game is 9 years old. The Crew 1 The Crew 1, developed by Ivory Tower and Ubisoft Reflections, was released in 2014 for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. The game offered a vast open world for players to explore, with a map that covered the entirety of the United States. The crew also had an extensive vehicle roster, ranging from sports cars to off-road vehicles, and there was also the introduction of bikes, drift and drag cars in a later update. The crew also had a variety of mission types to keep the players engaged. While the crew's expansive open world and varied missions were highly praised, the game suffered from a number of slight technical issues at launch, including server problems and game-breaking bugs. The crew was also criticised for its lackluster story and rather underwhelming visuals. Although it did improve after the year 1 update, it still wasn't the best considering it was out the same year as Drive Club. Regardless of that, it didn't stop the crew from being a great driving game. Test Drive Unlimited 2 Test Drive Unlimited 2, developed by Eden Games, was released in 2011 for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and PC. The game was unique in that it offered a unique open world environment on the island of Ibiza and Hawaii as well as a variety of sports cars and off-road vehicles to choose from. Like the crew, bikes were added later on. Test Drive Limited 2 was praised for its immersive open world, dynamic weather effects and extensive customization options. However, the game suffered from a number of technical issues, including graphical glitches, poor AI, a smaller car list compared to its predecessor, awful voice acting and frequent crashes. The issues were so bad that Eden Games eventually shut down and had to rebuild itself from the ground up with several of its workers going to Ivory Tower. But it's not all bad, as a passionate modding community have fixed all the bugs and added even more cars and other features to Test Drive Unlimited 2 to turn this game into the game that we all wanted it to be. And if that doesn't float your boat, Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown is just around the corner. Gran Turismo 7 Gran Turismo 7, developed by Polyphony Digital, was released in 2022 for the PlayStation 4 and 5. The game was released with an extensive roster of cars, a variety of tracks, and stunning visuals that take full advantage of the next-gen console's hardware. GT7 had a smooth-ish launch, although the physics were a little funky at times, and thankfully that has since been fixed, but they were awkward, especially when you had a four-wheel drive car with power sliding everywhere. But that wasn't even GT7's biggest issues. There were two particular issues that stood out above the rest. One was the career mode, which is based in this cafe, which I personally enjoyed it, although it did feel a lot shorter and as if there was a few shortcuts taken. But regardless, I personally did not mind the cafe as it had a car collecting element to it. Anyway, the one thing that I can't be positive about were the launch microtransactions. Grand Turismo games have always had a grinding element, giggity, but GT7 took the mick altogether, with players having to fork out nearly 100 euros for just one car. And then the in-game races just didn't reward enough money to the player, even if you won and did really well. This resulted in an awful Metacritic review on the game that wasn't even that bad overall. Thankfully, most of the issues have been ironed out, but by the time that has happened, the damage has still been done. 
but one positive is that the game is still being supported in, and likely will be for the next 2 or 3 years. And finally, we have Need for Speed The Run. Need for Speed The Run, developed by EA Blackbox, was released in 2011 for the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360 and PC. The game offered a unique story mode that followed the protagonist as he participated in an illegal street race from San Francisco to New York. Need Speed The Run was praised for its cinematic storytelling and variety of vehicles and tracks. Although the game suffered from a number of technical issues including poor AI, repetitive levels and gameplay, and it also received criticism for its short length and lack of replay value. Not gonna lie, the run is up there with one of my all time favourite Need for Speeds. Sure it was short, but it sure was sweet. The cars sounded amazing, the multiplayer was good fun too, and the dark storyline was done to perfection. It's just a pity that this title just doesn't get the praise it deserved. Or it seems to have nowadays, but it's been over 10 years since the game came out. Anyway, what do you guys think? Do you think I'm an idiot? Do you think these games were really good? Let me know down in the comments below. Just thank you all so much for watching. Hope to see you all very, very soon.